Now you might be wondering whether fish oil is going to be an effective thing to add into a hair care routine. Well we're going to answer that exact question in this video. We're going to look at how we can use fish oil. Uh, we're going to look at how it can like reduce inflammation. We're going to look at an omega-3 and omega-6 debate. Then actually at the end of the video we're going to tell you how you can supplement with fish oil to get the best results for your hair. So make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel we create science backed videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow hair. If you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. So what you're going to learn about today in this video is we're going to look at what fish oil is, we're going to talk about how it can potentially reduce inflammation, then we're going to look at the omega-3 and omega-6 debate. We're going to talk about how fish oil may be linked with dihydrotestosterone, then we're going to show you the best ways to apply fish oil, then we've just got a brief conclusion. So first things first, what is fish oil? Fish oil is the fat or oil that is extracted from the tissues of certain fish. This oil generally contains a high level of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. Even though our body requires these fatty acids in order to function properly, we cannot synthesize them ourselves. We need to obtain them through diet. There are three types of omega-3 fatty acids applicable. The two most widely talked about is this acid and these two acids, we're going to call them EPA and DHA. They are found in a variety of marine life such as tuna, herring, mackerel and krill. These animals do not produce omega-3s internally, but they rather accumulate them by either consuming phytoplankton, which is a type of marine algae, or preying on other fish that have ingested the omega-3s prior. The other type of omega-3, called alpha-linoleic acid or ALA, are found primarily in plant-based foods such as nuts, flaxseed, chia and hemp. Now the ALA, the alpha-linoleic acid or ALA, is considered the shorter chain omega-3 fatty acid, while the EPA and DHA have longer chain omega-3 fatty acids. Now omega-3 helps influence the cell membrane by affecting the function of cell receptors in these membranes. They are crucial for making hormones that regulate the contraction, relaxation and, relaxation and clotting of artery walls. Therefore, it plays a large role in controlling inflammation. They are also heavily present in the brain and are necessary for cogn cognitive performances, including memory, mood and behavioural function. Many scientists argue that most of the cellular benefits linked to omega-3 fats are associated to the marine-based EPA and DHA. ALA can convert into EPA and DHA in the body, but it is done at a very low ratio. Though it hasn't been well researched yet, omega-3 fish oil may be able to encourage healthy skin and hair growth due to its strong anti-inflammatory properties. By reducing chronic attacks to the scalp, the body can provide proper circulation and nourishment to the hair follicles and promote sustainable growth. So how does fish oil actually reduce inflammation? Inflammation is a complex biological process that is part of the normal host's response to the many harmful stimuli of life, such as injuries, infections, foreign pathogens and toxins. Immune cells present in the damaged tissue will release various inflammatory markers to activate inflammation, which will start the process of removing any invading microorganisms or dead tissue. Only when they are cleared out can the body start to repair itself, thus ending the inflammation cycle and allowing cells to proceed as normal. However, the problem arises when the foreign microorganisms are persistently present and the, anti -inflammatory, sorry, the inflammatory markers will continue sending distress signals and prolong the inflammation for an extended duration of time. Now, this uncontrollable type of inflammation is called chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation can be very serious and is often the onset of many disorders and diseases, including those related to metabolic syndromes, autoimmune and cancer. In the case of hair loss, unnatural accumulation of harmful substances such as free radicals, DHT, bacteria and fungus in the scalp region can instigate and perpetuate inflammatory response to the tissues. The symptoms of persistent inflammation will not only damage follicular cells but also limit a vital supply of nutrition and impede attempts to repair damaged cells. This often leads to chronic hair loss which if left unaddressed may become irreversible. Therefore managing chronic inflammation will encourage healthy function in the scalp and conceivably promote hair growth. A few studies have suggested that the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids 
Fatty acids in fish oil may exert anti-inflammatory benefits in both a prophylytic manner, which means preventing an increase in inflammation, as well as a therapeutic manner, which means decreasing elevated inflammatory markers. Now, to test the anti-inflammatory properties of fish oil, uh, this group of researchers recruited 138 middle-aged and older adults who were sedentary and overweight and split them into three groups. One of them took 2.5 grams of fish oil, another one took 1.25 grams, and the last took a placebo with a mixture of palm, olive, soy, canola, and cocoa butter oil. Now, the researchers chose a 7 to 1 EPA to DHA balance due to the prior evidence suggesting that EPA has a relatively stronger anti-inflammatory effect than DHA. After four months of continuous use, the researchers found that there was a significant decrease in the inflammation markers between the placebo group and the fish oil group. In the placebo group, there was even an increase in these markers, making them more susceptible to inflammation. And I'll also link, a, I'll link you the uh, study in the description. Now we're going to have a quick look at the omega-3 and omega-6 debate. One of the hypotheses for the chronic inflammation in our body, including at the scalp, is related to omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid. A popular theory suggests that while omega-3s help reduce inflammation, omega-6s do the opposite by promoting inflammation. However, not all omega-6 fatty acids should be measured in the same light. Though inconclusive, many researchers argued that the overproduction of a specific omega-6 called arachidonic acid may be more responsible than others. These same researchers further suggest that omega-3 fatty acids, in addition to the inherent anti-inflammatory properties, can also interrupt arachidonic acid from overexpression. At a biological level, the omega-3s compete with arachidonic acid to be synthesized by the specific enzymes that help regulate the, an the inflammatory markers, which, as we know, are instrumental to the initiation and continuation of inflammation. Now, if these enzymes bind with the omega-3 acid, many aggressive inflammatory markers will not activate. However, if there are too many arachidonic acids, then the enzyme will use them instead. This will trigger more activities in the inflammatory markers, thus sustaining the chronic inflammation. Given that the typical American diet generally contains 14 to 25 times more omega-6 fatty acids than the omega-3, it seems reasonable to assume that eliminating a majority of our omega-6 intake will be the most effective dietary practice for promoting a healthy scalp. In fact, this method might prove to be more counterproductive for combating alopecia. Now, in moderation, the very same arachidonic acid has shown to support hair growth by preventing healthy hair cells from prematurely self-destructing. In addition, arachidonic acid can help promote cell integrity by activating special growth factors that encourage the multiplication of these keratin cells during the anagen phase of hair growth. Therefore, the problem of chronic inflammation may lie more in the imbalance of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in the body. In recent years, many studies investigating high omega-3 intake have also shown that including omega-6 in the diet does not interfere with the benefits of omega-3, but instead works synergistically to reduce inflammation. Now, the American Heart Association published a study that took patients from two previous cohort studies and narrowed it down to approximately 405 healthy men and 454 healthy women for this study. They then took blood samples from each participant and examined the ratios of omega-3 to omega-6. They found that subjects with low levels of omega-3 and high levels of omega-6 tend to have high degrees of inflammatory markers. Interestingly enough, though, Subjects that had a high intake of both omega-3 and omega-6 resulted in the lowest level of inflammation markers. Given their finding, the researchers suggest that individuals should concentrate on consuming more sources of omega-3, which may prove effective in directly addressing the fatty acid imbalance in most Western diets. Now guys, let's have a look at how fish oil may be linked to DHT. While researchers are still in the early phases, a daily intake of fish oil may help reduce the hair loss through the regulation of the hormone dihydrotestosterone. DHT is a sex steroid and androgen hormone that is created as a testosterone byproduct. While we recognize that testosterone is essential for sexual functions and certain male development, it is also the precursor for DHT. In fact, about 5 to 10% of circulating free testosterone, with the help of the enzyme type 2 5 alpha reductase, converts to DHT. Now, while DHT plays a vital role in secondary male characteristics, 
such as facial hair, chest hair, deepening voice and muscle mass, it also serves to take hair away from the scalp. When DHT attaches itself to the hair follicle's oil gland, it stops essential vitamins, minerals and proteins from nourishing the follicles. This effectively shortens the average lifespan of the hair follicles, which results in its shrinking and stunted development. Now, numerous studies have linked the correlation between the two. Interestingly enough, DHT has also been linked to the growth of prostate cells. While this is normal in adolescence years, in many older men, it contributes to benign prostatic hyperlasia or BPH, a condition characterized by a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate gland. Therefore, alopecia is likely correlated with the development of BPH. One particular study seeks to examine the role of 21 different dietary fatty acid contents in subjects with benign and malignant prostatic diseases in comparison to healthy patients. After collecting blood samples from 64 male patients, 21 of which with BPH, 19 with prostate cancer and 21 with neither, researchers found that BPH and prostate subjects are generally associated with low omega-3 fatty acid counts. The researchers postulate that both benign and malignant prostatic diseases are dependent on the same few hormones, including testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. These two hormones alone play a major role in regulating the synthesis, release and metabolism of a lipid compound called prostaglandins, which is influenced by the metabolism of fatty acids. Therefore, omega-3 fatty acids may have a direct role to DHT's effects on BPH and the enlargement of the prostate. So how can you actually start applying fish oil? If you think omega-3 can help with your hair loss, experts from World Health Organizations um, recommend taking approximately 250 to 500 milligrams per day. However, you should take into consideration several factors, including age, health, and daily omega-6 intake before deciding an appropriate dosage of fish oil. When choosing a brand, note the amount of EPA and DHA contained in each capsule, which may differ from each supplier. Generally speaking, you should aim for a brand that provides a minimum of 180 mg of EPA and 120 mg of DHA. Keep in mind that some of these supplement companies may provide false advertisement about the quality and concentration of their oil. Check the labels to make sure that it has been tested and verified by a trusted third party, such as GOED. Now, unfortunately, it is not uncommon to encounter fish oil with an unpleasant odor. This may be an indication of oxidation, which means that the oil is likely not fresh. Though a few studies have displayed no evidence of oxidized fish oil negatively affecting health in the short run, it may be better to avoid taking these. It may also be helpful to take a vitamin E supplement alongside fish oil. Vitamin E is a fat-soluble antioxidant that can counteract any oxidation present. While it is entirely possible to apply the oil directly to the scalp and hair, some may find the fish smell too rancid and overbearing. You can mix the fish oil with another oil to dilute the smell. Otherwise, oral consumption should provide the same benefits. Except for bad breath and occasional belching, fish oil is likely safe for most people when taken in low doses. You can take the supplement with a meal to prevent these minor issues. More serious side effects, such as weakened immune system and reduced blood clotting, may occur when fish oil is taken in high doses. Now, just to conclude, the omega-3 content in fish oils provides many applicable benefits for a healthier scalp especially if it is well balanced with omega-6. Therefore, we do not think it will hurt to add fish oil to your daily regimen. Keep in mind though that there is currently not enough conclusive evidence to suggest that fish oil will make a large difference in remedying hair loss or promoting hair growth. Because there is little consensus on the best dietary practice for fish oil, it is best to consult a physician before starting. If you have a condition and are currently taking other drugs, fish oil may interfere and cause more harm than good. So guys, long one, but we wanted to share with that view on fish oil. Remember, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.